Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the issue of stores who, instead of giving promotional items, they take them and then they sell them online or to customers at a later date. Now there is a store, it is not in Humble, it is not in Houston, it is in Kingwood. There's not that many stores in Kingwood. So this store, every time I call up for the game day, and why I'm bringing this up now is there is a very good game day promo, a beautiful promo, which used to be $2 and now is 12 And what they do for an expensive promo is they go online, they check its price. If it is over $10, then they make it very difficult to have a game day. They ask for at least eight people to be there. And then they say, hey, we only get half the price because we have two stores and Wizard of the Coast doesn't recognize us as two stores. So instead of having top eight get the card, they give it to top four. And that's if they have game day. Now, game day should be a event to promoting good stores and good organizations. They take game day as, hey, we got 16 extra promos. Let's try our best not to have game day and then sell them online. And this happens with the game day mats as well. And as we get more and more promos, for instance, the A for Hub promo will be highly wanted, as well as the full art land promos. They're all beautiful looking. So you have two concepts of a store. One store wants to bring as many people as possible and is willing to give pizza and Cokes and they want to bring this great environment. And then you have another store that is stingy and will, instead of even giving, giving eight of these promos out, they will at most give four, if that at all. So why should we discuss this? It's not just promos, it's also prize boxes. It's also, you know, those packs. What was those packs called where you could pull an expedition from? I forget, it was like some type of launch pack. You have a lot of merchandise to get players to play. And that is how you make magic survive. Wizards of the Coast realizes this. However, sometimes a store does not realize they can make a lot more money if they just give promos or they add prize support themselves. Some stores will open a box, they will weigh the packs. Remember, an expedition is a foil, therefore it is much likely the pack will be heavier than a regular non-foil pack. They weigh their packs and then anytime you get your prize support and every time it is in open booster boxes and you don't see a booster box being freshly opened, that is cause for concern, especially since sometimes you're not going to open Expedition all the time, but if no one opens an Expedition week after week of drafting and every box is opened, there is cause for concern. This is especially true, not just in this game, but in Cardfight Vanguard, there is certain levels of pricing given you know, like a triple rare or an SP, and those weigh differently. So you can weigh them, and the same can be said uh, about older Yu-Gi-Oh packs. Now, I think every Yu-Gi-Oh pack has a foil now, but in the past they didn't. So what happened with this dragon, the regent? Uh, what happened was they, a store was given 16 to run two different game days and they had two play mats. That's how I know that they had 16. They decided not to make it very difficult to run even one game day. I needed to get eight people and we had to do a sealed event. It wasn't, you know, and we had to pay $30 to do a sealed event which is insane. So not only are they trying to make it too expensive for people to try to play in the event, because not everyone has $30. Game day, I expect to be $5, because it's $5 most other places. But $30 is very expensive for a sealed event at your local game store, right? Six booster packs times $4 a booster pack with some, quote, prize support 
which really is just the free promotional items anyway. So it's not like they added more stuff to the prize support at $30. $30, your prize support was the promo card. And at that point in time, this card was over $10. And they were like, okay, if you want this card, you need to find seven other people to play a sealed event with you. And we're only going to have a few rounds, single elimination, and that is how we're going to do it. You might ask, why? Why would a store do this to save pennies? It's like cutting off your nose to spite your face. I forgot who said that. I watched that recently. I watched like something on Netflix recently, and that was a quote. So leave me a comment below if you know where that came from on Netflix. Very, very intriguing concept of selling these online. You can get the maximal price as soon as it comes out and the stores being stores that sell magic product and price singles, they absolutely know Glory Bringer is a pricey card. It's not like, oh, I, I don't know if this is a good card or not. No, they always know if their promo is good or not. And they always receive many copies of their promo. So during some FNMs, when I remember the Path to Exile FNM, not, ev not all the top eight or whoever was supposed to receive paths received paths. I think actually it was just one or two, maybe the top four. I forget what it was with Path to Exile, but it would just be the winner if FNM would receive the pack and no one else, right? And it's kind of crazy. That's the... 100% guaranteed way to destroy your player base is to not give out the promotional items you're supposed to give out to sell these items online and or use them as prize support to justify a more expensive sealed event for game day. Uh, game day is all about using the new decks and I said hey you know this is bad we're going to report you that's not going to stop them. You can report them as many times as you want. Wizard of the Coast is not going to do anything because they are a front. So Walmart, take Walmart for instance. People pay Walmart to stock their product. There is a stocking fee. So if you want that fancy, valuable Walmart space, you either need to sell X amount of items or you need to pay a stocking fee. The same can be said about Wizards of the Coast's relationship with game stores. And I know this firsthand. It is very difficult for a game store to lose their license because that's how Wizards of the Coast makes money. It's not the opposite way around. Uh, many game stores, at least here, they can survive on Warhammer and Dungeons and Dragons, which I guess is another Wizard product. That's not a good example, but they can survive on Yu-Gi-Oh! and anime, merchandise, comic books being the big one. They view magic as a supplemental product that has some type of value. But that comic book store owner is, if is they are dropped from Wizards of the Coast's WPN, I don't feel like they care that much anyway. But Wizards of the Coast cares more because that means that, that store is not selling, promoting, they're promoting something else, right? There's a million items out there a comic book store can promote. So instead of a Liliana poster promoting magic, and that is branding, that is an exercise in branding, they have a anime poster. So that I feel like that is why Wizard of the Coast has a tough time dropping these stores, is because these stores are the lifeline of their income. And that's why they can get away with it time and time again. It's not a mystery that you will see glory bringers way ahead. As soon as a store gets them, you will see them on eBay before the game day event. And then they will sell all 16 of them. <laughs> that's just the way things are. I wish it was not this way. And one of the ways that you can stop is you, you know, people say, oh, I'm going to stop going to the store. That's probably not the best solution because store owner doesn't care. But if you can incentivize store owner to be reasonable and say, hey, you know, this is what's going to happen. More people will come to your store. My friends will come here more often. We'll buy packs. We'll buy drinks. We'll sponsor, you know, events even here. I'll buy pizza. I always buy, for the Pokemon Go stuff, I always lower it up because why not? Like, I'm going to 
try to catch those Pokemon anyway. And I would say, hey, you know, like, you want me to be here because I can draw more people here since I will make, you know, the event have more Pokemon, I guess. But many other times, I will order pizza for somebody. Like, it's such a small expense compared to, like, Fire Emblem, which I just dropped more money on to get orbs. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> or any other mobile game. So I was really into uh, Final Fantasy Tangent, so you can pause the video if you're sick already. Into Final Fantasy, and luckily I'm over that game, but I just got addicted to Fire Emblem Heroes. Because I love Fire Emblem. My favorite characters are Camellia, obviously, Lucina, and I like Hanoka. I'm butchering their names. And then I haven't, I don't, I didn't know Faye was a dragon, but I like all the dragons. Faye, I didn't know it was a dragon. Uh, Tiki, I have both Tikis. I, I have, I'll show you my Fire Emblem collection. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. I actually paid, I, I'm not going to get into it. This is too depressing. Anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below. Bye.